so when you have a lot of reserves, for example, the Federal, Federal Reserve has a lot of reserves. Actually, it's the US Treasury who has the reserves, but also on the books of the Federal Reserve. You can, you can do swaps. So you keep the gold stored in, in, the, uh, in the safe, but you can sell it and then make an agreement and a contract that it, it has to be replaced a few years later. We don't know uh, specific how it works, but we see the selling every day. It has been documented that they did this also in the 1960s. Commodities. But before we get there, I want to focus a little bit more on the book. It's a fantastic read and so filled with information and historical insights. It can be downloaded for free at our website. That's so how I got it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's not expensive. Not expensive yeah. at all, but yeah. priceless in terms of the value of information, Willem. But in it, um, you make the case that central banks have been waging a war on gold for decades. You cite several examples well-documented, substantiated yeah. examples. Yeah. I was reading some of this and going, what? Yeah. I don't know that. I was like no, quite taken aback. But one yeah. thing struck me in particular, and that was one statement by Alan Greenspan, which touches back on what you said now about Fed and Powell and managing sentiment and expectations. Yeah. And according to a transcript from the FOMC meeting in March of 1993, which you cited in the book, uh, the Federal Reserve Board discussed how inflation expectations are influenced by the price of yeah. gold. And Greenspan explained that a drop in the gold price would lower inflation yes. expectations yes. and that he wanted to change the dynamics of the gold price so it wouldn't be an alarm for inflation this, and the dollar. This is the core. And, this is the core. And in this yes. transcript of the FOMC meeting, yeah. it is written, and I'm quoting Greenspan here, if we're dealing with psychology, then the thermometers one uses to measure it have an effect. I was raising the question on the side with Governor Mullins of what would happen if the Treasury sold a little gold in this market. There's an interesting question here because if the gold price broke in that context, the thermometer would not just be a measuring tool, it would basically affect the underlying psychology. Well, you read it very well. You read the book very well because this is the core of the problem. So the Fed understands that since they took the dollar off the gold standard in 1971, they need to work on gold because people follow gold as a, uh, well, as a sign of, of rising inflation. And gold is the anti-dollar now. And um, you can see this every day. Every day when the US opens, the markets open, gold, uh, gold drops a few dollars. And this uh, gold price is managed by selling a lot of futures, we call paper gold, through the COMEX right. system. And I think the stress within the system is getting larger and larger. We see a lot of physical gold leaving the COMEX vault. So that's coming more and more pressure in this paper gold system. And one day they might lose control. And then you could see very um, a quick um, revaluation of the gold price. Right. Well, you make the point that gold is the canary in the coal mine. Yeah. Central banks see that as well. That's yeah. why they've tried to address that. But the Fed is that's not allowed to sell it's gold reserves. Is, is that correct? The no, US Treasury why, is not no, legally that's why, allowed. That's, that's where why. they started the swap system. Yeah, and that's why since the 1960s, they've been trying to convince all their friends. Canada sold all their gold. The UK sold almost all their gold in the 1990s. So they told all their friends, sell the gold. It's not longer any import. It's not uh, important anymore in this monetary system. But the US didn't sell one ounce themselves. And now more and more countries understand this game and they're adding to their gold reserve, especially countries in the East and countries from the West, from Europe. They repatriated their gold, which was stored by the, uh, at the Federal Reserve. So there's a lot of stress building in the system. And one day it will break and you see a very strong move upwards. But explain how the gold swap system works if the Fed itself may want to change sentiment by suppressing the price of gold, but legally can't. So how does the swap well, system work? Break that down for uh, us. The, 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 um, you have the Bank of International Settlements, which is the model of all central banks and is based in Switzerland. Uh, they use them a lot. Uh, so when you have a lot of reserves, for example, the Federal Reserve has a lot of reserves. Actually, it's the US Treasury who has the reserves, but also on the books of the Federal Reserve. You can, you can do swaps. So you keep the gold stored in, in, the, uh, in the safe, but you can sell it and then make an agreement and a contract that it, it has to be replaced a few years later. We don't know 
uh, specific how it works, but we see the selling every day. It has been documented that they did this also in the 1960s through the London Gold Pool. The London Gold Pool was a combination a coalition of Western Central Banks selling some physical every week to keep the gold price down, six to $35 an ounce. So, yeah, it has been documented rather well. And, and you do actually point out several cases very clearly in the book and substantiate them. What would you say was the most blatant example of central bank gold suppression in history? Um, I think what happened in the 1960s, because that has been documented so well. Um, I just mentioned it, it's the London Gold Pool. Go to Wikipedia, look for the London Gold Pool, it's all out there, because it's such a long time ago, um, everything has been studied. And actually, what was very telling that France, who was part of these Western countries selling gold every week on the market, in 1967, France didn't want to take uh, to join any longer, and they stopped. They left the London Gold Pool. Actually, it said one of their Navy ships to Manhattan to collect the physical gold from the Federal Reserve vaults. And that's a very telling sign. So study that part of history and then you understand the, the current situation. So how does that fit in with the current situation right now? Are central banks still actively suppressing gold prices? That, that's my opinion. Uh, they, they're not open about it, but everything points to that. It's very interesting to study what the bank... But we don't have FOMC meetings and point no. to it quite like we did in 1993 no, no. in terms of sentiment. You so. always learn that uh, 10 or 20 years later when uh, books are being written and people uh, are, um, well, passing away and they, they've mentioned things to friends. So we don't know yet. Uh, and I tried in my book to find all circumstantial evidence to support to support this claim, and I'm not the only one telling this. So this is widely accepted now. And especially, I, I mentioned some of the Chinese and Russian uh, quotes from specialists, uh, from their monetary specialists, and they point to this uh, managing of the gold price as well. So the Chinese and, and the Russians understand. And my book was even translated into Chinese. So I know from Chinese specialists that they, they follow this line of thinking. Well, the book was uh, published in 2014. 2014, yeah. Okay. Since then, we've seen, as you mentioned earlier, that China and Russia have tremendously bolstered their gold reserves with their central banks. Yeah. And in fact, we're seeing that central banks around the world yeah. are adding yeah. to their gold reserves, with the exception of Canada, by the way. Yeah, um, they can confiscate the gold mines, so that's easy. <laughs> hmm, that's a very, very, very scary prospect you've put out yeah, there. And it's, it's more a joke than Yeah, I joke, actually, but you know what, what we've seen recently uh, with yeah. some of the well, with freezing Trudeau, of the you never accounts, know, I mean, you know, it's the new dictator. Uh, I will caution the term dictator, but I can see I can see that that sentiment That's, is not necessarily uh, that far off. But I'll play Europe, it safe. In Europe, let me so, sorry for that, but in Europe, people are very negative. Uh, they they see what's happening here, and we always thought Canada was the land of the free, like the right. U.S. And many people moved and immigrated to Canada, and we're. we're we're surprised, to say the least, what's oh, happening as, as here. as am I, and I'm based in New York. I don't want to delve too much into Canadian politics, no. but, but certainly... No, we shouldn't no, do that. <laughs> <laughs> not this time. No. Not while we're still guests in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but, but certainly a lot, a lot, a lot of red flags being raised over some of the, the yeah. recent behavior from the Trudeau administration. Yeah. But and, we see uh, the very, same in Europe, eh? Yeah, and, and, and some fascist... Yeah. Uh, Leanings, shall we say, in actions, but let's yeah. let's bring it back, back to, to, back to, to gold. Safe. <laughs> Not that gold. safe, but let's bring it back to gold <laughs> yeah. and, and bring it back to central banks. Um, because it begs the question that if central banks are so good at suppressing and manipulating the price of gold, why should you invest in why it? Why invest in gold? <laughs> because manipulation never continues forever. And manipulation gives you uh, a way to buy something cheap. And if you study, we, we've seen some great examples. Actually, I mentioned them in my book. Uh, once there was a, um, uh, there was a crisis uh, uh, regarding the potato futures, also in Chicago, on the futures market. Somebody was short potato futures. And at a certain uh, moment, this all collapsed. The whole market collapsed, prices went up. Same what happened with nickel a few months ago. 
So we know from history, you can try to manage these prices, but you, it can't go on forever. And when it stops, when it breaks, you get a very sharp rise. It happened to Palladium three years ago. Uh, there were a lot of outstanding shorts, paper shorts, the, uh, through the future market in Palladium. And then prices start to move rapidly and um, it was the end of the paper shorts.